Ed Balls, your big announcement was the use of the next generation of frequencies generating a serious amount of money, four billion, to, to, to build 100,000 homes. But how are you sure that you'll actually get four billion? Well, um, the estimates from the experts are two to four billion pounds. And we've said, let's take a cautious view and go for half of that. So three billion pounds, halfway between two and four, three billion pounds, which is half a billion for the stamp duty cut over two years, to abolish stamp duty for first time buyers, and then 2.5 billion pounds, which we've worked with the National Housing Federation, and we believe we can get 100,000 homes over two years, which are a combination of private rent, social rent, um, and also um, shared equity, all affordable. And it's going to create, um, if the government does it, if they did it right now, it would create hundreds of thousands of jobs. So I think it's a really powerful way of saying government can act to kickstart the recovery and get the deficit down. But, but you of all people know that we're going into even darker times than we're in at the moment. Uh, there's a European-wide recession. You may well only get the bottom end of that figure, two billion. And in any case, the government's already spent half a billion of that already. What are well, you going to do about that? Well, uh, first of all, the government has not spent this already. Well, it's going on science. And, uh, the business minister this morning said they've spent it. A treasury minister came out this afternoon and, and has contradicted him and then said in terms, no, this has not been allocated. I think the government well, well, we should... know that there's a particular project at Manchester no. University which has indeed been funded to £50 million pounds for the new graphene um, metallic generation. Not according to the treasury. I think the government needs to get their story right before they start undermining our announcements. What they should do is not try and carp and pick holes because it's not true the accusations they're making. They should say, look, you're right. Our plan's not worked. We're in double-dip recession. Mm. The borrowing in our country is not going down. The deficit is going up this year. And what they should say is, OK, look, we got it wrong. We need to kickstart the recovery. Here's a good idea. George Osborne should adopt this idea and do it now. But worthy though it is, uh, 100,000 homes is not going to kickstart the economy. And there was very little else in your speech which really put figures on what you would do. Look, give a hang on, John. Uh, a VAT cut for a year to 17.5%. Mm -hmm. Repeat the tax on bank bonuses to um, get 100,000 young people back to work. Cut VAT to 5% on repairs and maintenance. Bring forward infrastructure projects like we're doing on housing. And also cut national insurance. You don't, you don't put any figure on them. You don't actually say what you would spend. You've appointed John Armit from the Olympic Authority, but you haven't actually said no. what you would do. I mean, there is a debate going on, and the debate is, should it be 35 billion, should it be 25 billion? You don't even discuss a figure. Well, look, uh, it's a fair point, because I was making two distinct um, arguments. Short term, I gave you five different things to do now to kickstart the recovery. The government says they can't do them because it would lead to more borrowing, but they're the ones whose failing economic plan is pushing the deficit up. Separately, I'm saying, look, on these big issues, nuclear, uh, wind and tidal, rail and road, mm. the future of aviation, uh, all these things, uh, the Thames barrier, we can't say, you know, right now, we're not going to make any decisions or even think ahead because of the, the fiscal position, when in the next 20, 30, 40 years, if we don't do these things, we're going to have climate change worries, we're going to have an infrastructure which is mm. flaky, and we need a long-term consensus. And to appoint the chair of the Olympic Development Authority to forge a long-term consensus, you're right. We're not saying today, here's the answer. But to be honest, at the moment, this government's not even addressing the question. And I'm saying more consensus is what we need. The trouble is, you've had a go already, and you made a mess of it. You made a mess of the banking situation, you made a mess of PFI, and now you're asking people to trust you to do something in the future which isn't a mess. Well, we made the decision not to join the Euro, one of the best and most important decisions in British politics in the last, in the last 30 years. We made the Bank of England independent, which has been a hugely important no, reform. No, no, you're listing, you're listing, we, you're listing the well, positives. Well, hang I've on a second, John, you said made a mess. I've mentioned the negatives, and well, the negatives I'll, are I'll, significant. I'll, no, I'll admit one negative, absolutely. We should have regulated the banks in a tough enough way the government is now watering down important reforms. Only Labour is saying, well, let's have the tough reforms sounds, we need. That sounds very good, but that was a complete disaster. That mm -hmm. resulted in where we are now. Yes. And the trouble is, you were there. Well, of course I was there. If you felt... And so was Ed if Miliband, you felt, And so were many other members of the Shadow Cabinet. But, but you were very prominently there, well, because was, you were in that very tight circle around Gordon Brown. Mm -hmm. And the question I have for you is, if you found that your presence in an economic portfolio was a drag on the party's fortunes, would you move aside? Would you move to some other job? 
well, of course. But Ed Miliband appointed me to be the Shadow Chancellor because he thought I was the best person to take the argument to the country and persuade business and the public that Labour has isn't got an alternative the, short and long term. Isn't the political reality was that he knew you were too big a bruiser not to have on deck in that job? Well, maybe he thought bank independence, the tax rise for the health service, calling the economy you're right in 2010. You're not addressing the issue I'm suggesting, which is you're a very strong beast in the jungle. Have you on the wrong side? And that would be difficult. I think um, maybe uh, for a Labour government to have somebody who's willing to make the tough decisions on spending, on tax, on pay, to take uh, the, um, the um, brickbats as they come, is important because it, being Shadow Chancellor or Chancellor, it's not obviously the most important job to be if you want to be popular, but it's important to um, be tough and be able to take that long term view, but also to be But consensual. the difficulty here is that Labour has a recent past mm. and you are part of it, a big part of it. Well, and, and, I understand, and, John. And but, why, yeah, but this I is, have to say, though, this you know, is absolutely at the core of the thing because are you sure? would the, the next election will be fought around the economy. Yeah, but, but, and if people but John, see the same man coming forward who came forward before and got us into this difficulty, are they really going to vote for you? Look, I have to say, John, I think the next election in 2015 is not going to be fought, whatever you may think, about what was um, happening 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. It's going to be... No, no, who's five got, years ago. Well, it's going to be who's... Well, five years ago, I was the Secretary of State for Children's Schools and Families. You were, opposing in, the tight, me, you were in the tight well, coterie. Well, look, I was the Secretary of State for Children's Schools and Families making important decisions about the future of children in our country. And in 2015, people will say, who do I think I can trust to make tough decisions on spending, but also to invest long term for the future. Who is somebody who's got a track record of being able to make difficult mm. judgments and getting them right? And you know, there is up against George up, Osborne. Up against George there Osborne. Is, I'm John, standing you, up in this you, building if, behind us right now. Let me finish. Is the General Secretary of the GMB, yep. who is setting out the, the issues that put them at variance with you, and one of the most critical ones they talk about is PFI. And here's the government about to bring PFI forward yet again. Yeah. You're in no position to say don't. Well, but, but John, Lee, look, you know, I, I fear you and I, I may disagree about this. But actually, what PFI did was bring forward new schools and new hospitals on better budgets, on time, compared to old-style procurement. It wasn't always right. With a dramatic Some debt well, down the road. No, well, look, 54 billion now, 120 billion come and, in the next 10 years. And, and every PFI project had to have the approval of the National Audit Office, and it is sensible to plan long-term and have a partnership. But we're in debt. We're have in a debt massively. Sensible to and plan PFI's long part term. of it. But it's not my job to make trade union leaders happy. And to be honest, if trade union leaders were happy, I think many of your viewers would think, well, actually, maybe he's not doing a very good job of being Shadow Chancellor. I've come here today and said a short-term plan to kickstart the recovery, a long-term plan to transform our infrastructure as well as our banking system, but there'll be tough decisions. We can't make promises we can't keep. And we can't, I'm afraid, say, put pay before jobs. Doesn't please every person in this hall, but I think many Labour Party members, and many people in the country will say, actually, that's the kind of uh, long-term steel we need. Compare that to George Osborne and David Cameron, a tax cut for millionaires, a double-dip recession. Um, I think we can win this Ed election. Balls, thank you very much for talking to us.